Hey, wonderful people. So today I've got a very, very interesting update on the alien signal. First of all, I have to reach out and say thank you for listening to what I'm saying, but I'm also feeling a bit isolated here. <laughs> Brits for listeners are sticking to their very good report that they did back in 2020, where they said BLC1, this candidate of a possible extraterrestrial technological signature, was too low level to confirm, and it probably was just human interference. But what Brits for Listen are not saying is since their 2020 report, other people have studied the signal. A team in Europe have broken through the low information zone to actually get more detail on this possible alien technological signature. So I know who's done that work, but they don't want to come on my show or make it public that they found evidence of the signal. But as a pushy, annoying journalist, I spent hours on the phone with them, and today they are prepared to tell you who they are and how their system works to get incredible detail in weak radio telescope signals. The press officer and their scientists are not prepared to come on my show and actually tell you that they found the signal. But they shared with me three bits of new information how for the first time radio astronomy can be hundreds of times more sensitive to a very weak signal. So here's the big reveal. They're an organization funded very much by EU money called Astron. Astron stands for the Netherlands Institute of Radio Astronomy. What Astron have developed for radio astronomy in 2024 is wonderful. It's a way of getting incredible detail from weak signals. And it's all about phase array multiplex. What's that? Well, they shared with me this very clear piece of animation. Comparing a single movable radio telescope dish, such as the Parkes radio telescope in Australia, the very one that found the BLC signal back in 2020, but explaining how a single dish sensitivity has been blown wide open by phase array multiple radio telescope antenna and a very clever way of combining all their signals. This is a single movable dish antenna. It picks up a small part of a distant signal and focuses it to a focal point. But imagine a field of antennas that can all pick up the signal. But there's an issue with a field of antennas. Some are slightly nearer the signal and some are much further away they have a time interface phase issue. When you combine all their separate signals together, there'll be a time delay between them. That's the clever bit of the new technology. They can combine all the signals together as one big signal from hundreds of separate phased array antenna. These scientific behind the scenes organizations are doing amazing work. Astron works with Jive, Sorry, it's another acronym, but this is the Joint Institute for VLB1 in Europe. And the people who are combining global radio telescope multiplex information is a group called NOVA. So what is the new radio telescope that has blown this field wide open that can possibly hear enough detail to confirm an extraterrestrial technological signature? Um, this place, the Square Kilometer Array. In a remote and inhospitable desert, something incredible is being planned. Something that will enable us to explore the universe, its past, and its ultimate fate. A masterpiece of scientific engineering that will be the world's largest, most powerful radio telescope. The Square Kilometer Array. The SKA will detect radio waves to reveal the hidden universe and answer fundamental questions about the cosmos. 
Its overwhelming size will enable it to peer deep into space, back to a time known as the Dark Ages, before the first stars shone. The SKA will reveal how the first galaxies formed from huge clouds of hydrogen gas, and will reveal the origins of supermassive black holes at their centers. It will survey the sky 10,000 times faster than existing telescopes to create a 3D map of galaxies in space and cosmic time. This map will help us understand how galaxies evolve and how the acceleration in the expansion of the universe is driven by a mysterious dark energy. The SKA will search for gravitational waves, ripples in the fabric of space-time, by monitoring pulsars, the collapsed spinning cores of dead stars. These gravitational waves are generated when supermassive black holes interact. The SKA will also investigate how gravity behaves close to black holes. The unique sensitivity of the SKA will enable the study of radio emissions from the early universe that have passed through magnetic fields in space. This will help identify the origins of cosmic magnetism, a fundamental force difficult to study at other wavelengths. And through its ability to detect organic molecules and investigate how other Earth-like planets are formed, it might even answer the question, are we alone in the universe? The SKA will revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos. It will take us on a voyage into the unknown. Who knows what else it may reveal? Well, that was a bit of a corporate video, that corporate video voiceover, but I hope you get how it works. It's now just one of three phased array telescopes that can hear the details that you and I want. So that's as far as Astron in the Netherlands are prepared to go with me for you. I thought, until they emailed me this, here for the first time on my social media channel, is the signal from BLC1. Isn't that fascinating? You clearly heard the Doppler shift. The Doppler shift proves that it's not coming from human interference. The signal, whatever it is, is coming from something that's moving. It's either rotating or going away or coming towards us. Obviously, those two characteristics would come from an exoplanet. It's rotating and it's also orbiting, meaning it's coming towards you and going away. So that's as far as the organization Astron here in Europe are prepared to go today publicly. They're the ones who've done the work. They're the ones who built the radio telescope multiplexing, but they don't feel that they should be the ones to make the announcement. They feel that it should come from SETI. As a Neuenberger, I keep pressing people to come on screen and actually admit that they found the signal. It's not a matter of if. It's only a matter of when the truth is out there.